Our next fallacy, the so-called red herring, is used to distract an audience from the real issues in an argument with the intent of moving the discussion to an unrelated matter. The term red herring originates in hunting folklore, specifically the notion that a smelly piece of fish dragged across a scent trail could be used to sidetrack hunting hounds, thus diverting the dogs from their quarry. This video, from our friends at Wireless Philosophy, explains and exemplifies the red herring fallacy. Hello, my name is Joseph Wu and I'm a graduate student at Cambridge. In this video, I'll explain the red herring, a rhetorical device and fallacy that is often difficult to spot. Let's begin with an example from law. Imagine an attorney prosecuting a person for murder. The attorney stands up for the jury and says this. The defendant today is guilty of a horrendous crime. He murdered the victim not with a gun, not with a knife, but with a chainsaw. This was an awful way for the victim to die. Is this a good argument? Given the tools of logic we've learned from Wi-Fi, not really. The attorney is supposed to be arguing for the claim, the defendant committed murder. But the attorney appears to be arguing for a slightly different claim. Being killed with a chainsaw is an awful way to die. Notice, however, that the second claim does not provide evidence for the first. It doesn't follow from the fact that death by chainsaw is horrible that the defendant actually committed the murder. In this scenario, the attorney has used the red herring since she's distracted the jury with a point that seems relevant but actually is not. A red herring occurs when something is introduced to an argument that misleads or distracts from the relevant issue. The term originates from a past practice that involved dragging a strong-smelling red herring across one's trail to throw dogs off the scent. Similarly, people often introduce irrelevant details into an argument to divert attention from the real issue at hand. Of course, the attorney probably intentionally introduced the red herring in her statement. The attorney may be trying to establish a link in the jury's mind between these two seemingly related claims. Once the jury reflects on how horrible it would be to be killed with a chainsaw, they might begin associating the crime with the defendant instead of questioning the attorney's assumption that the defendant actually committed the crime. So while some red herrings are accidental, often they are intentional. Consider another example of how red herrings can be used to manipulate the media. One way to do this is to make outlandish statements that make good stories. Suppose, for instance, you accuse your political rival of being unfit for office because he hates pizza. Clearly, one's dislike of pizza is irrelevant to one's political abilities, but the absurdity of the claim is enough to spark a conversation that ultimately distracts from more meaningful issues. This can be a very powerful strategy. If the media spotlight is on the ridiculous pizza claim, this gives yourself more coverage and it prevents your opponent from controlling the conversation.